Hi Seals! Welcome to day five. So um, we know that there's a girl called Tilly. We know that she lives above her grandparents' bookshop. We've been introduced to a character called Jack who makes all the food, all the pastries for the bookshop and he wants to study in a Paris, at a Paris university um, to study food and pastries. And then Tilly was walking upstairs to her uh, grandparents' bedroom and they and grandma her grandma was talking to a person called Lizzie. And it was all a bit peculiar because she didn't see Lizzie leave the room, but she did leave. And grandma liked her because, like talking to Lizzie because um, it reminded her of her mum because her mum's gone missing many years ago. Okay, so we'll carry on. So, anyway, that's enough chat about old friends, Grandma said, bringing the conversation to a close with a firm nod of her head. Do you have a moment to come and help me in the stockroom? Tilly nodded, and Grandma took her hand as they walked down the stairs together, where they were immediately pounced on by a panicked-looking Jack. I need help, he wailed. What's wrong? Grandma asked as Tilly imagined an array of horrible accidents involving honey or knives or both. I can't find the vanilla essence, Jack shouted, making two people sitting drinking coffee eye him warily and Alice the cat raise her head in disdain from the cushioned seat she had claimed for the morning. Grandma sighed. That's all, Tilly sighed. I thought you'd hurt yourself. I thought it was an emergency. Jack looked surprised. This is an emergency. I need to get the vanilla in the batter now. Do you have any in the kitchen, Elsie? Or you could go and ask Mary, Tilly. Grandma took a deep breath. Tilly, you go and check the kitchen and see if you can find some in the pantry. I'm going to go back to the stock cupboard. Don't get honey on my book, Tilly said sternly, putting it behind the counter before heading to the kitchen. There was nothing in the pantry, so Tilly rifled through the kitchen cupboards, but she couldn't find any vanilla essence there either. The cupboards seemed to be full of everything and nothing all at the same time. The result of her granddad's inability to throw anything away in case it proved useful later. However, much it looked like junk to Tilly and Grandma. She found one orange sock, several pencils and the red half of a pack of cards, but no vanilla essence. And then, tucked away behind a heap of empty shoe boxes, she found a dusty cardboard box wrapped in packing tape. On the top flap it had B's books written in black marker pen. Tilly felt her heart squeeze and a crackle of something she couldn't identify deep inside her. These were her mum's stories. A little picture there. Chapter 3. Other People's Memories Tilly dragged the box into the kitchen and peeled off the tape, which had turned crunchy with age. The noise of the bookshop melted away and her hand drifted to the tiny gold bee necklace around her neck a gift from her mother when Tilly was born, which matched the one Bee had worn herself. So we now know that the mum, Tilly's mum, is called Bee. Tilly's idea of her mum was stitched together from a patchwork of old photos and other people's memories. No one knew where Beatrice Pages had gone, and this lack of facts meant that the hole her mother had left had torn, ragged edges that were slow to knit back together. Tilly had almost given up asking, but when she did, conversations about Bee's disappearance always went the same way. Love, we've told you everything we know and what the police think. It's not good to dwell on what happened, one of her grandparents would say. But the police think she was unhappy and just left to start again somewhere. I don't understand why she would have done that just after I was born if she... Tilly found it hard to voice the end of that thought. The reassurances always came. Tilly, she loved you very much. We know that without any doubt at all. I'd have to understand why she would leave if she loved me so much. Tilly couldn't help but come back to the same question she always asked, feeling the prick of tears as she spoke. We don't understand either, Tilly, my love. We wish we did, Grandma would say, and Grandad, as always, would quietly wipe his eyes with his tartan handkerchief. Tilly pulled her mind back into the box in front of her. Inside were piles of old books, the paper yellowing and the covers tattered and ripped. Tilly stared at them, not sure where to start, but as she went to pull out the top book, she heard Jack calling from the shop. Tilly! Vanilla! I'm smearing honey on your book as I speak! The bubble popped, and Tilly sighed and pushed the box to the side of the kitchen. 
She wanted to save it until she had un un uninterrupted time to look through it properly. The way she made sure she had time to save her a new book. She went back through to Jack in the bookshop. I couldn't find any vanilla. You should ask Mary, Tilly said. Well, go on then, Jack gestured impatiently. Go and ask her. Tilly opened her mouth to make an excuse, wanting to return to the box of books. But the, bu but the words weren't there. So she turned and grabbed an umbrella from by the door, but skidded on something squishy underfoot. She looked down to see a half-eaten sandwich on the wooden floor. She tuttered to herself and picked it up. Honestly, who eats marmalade sandwiches? She said to herself as she threw it in the bin outside the shop and crossed the road to Crumbs, the cafe run by Mary Rue. Who do we think? What character do we know that loves marmalade sandwiches? Have a think about that. Mary and Jack had a long-standing, mostly affectionate rivalry that was almost entirely one-sided. Mary was always lending Jack things he was missing and offering him baking tips. The bell above the door jangled as Tilly went in. She didn't spot Mary straight away, but she noticed Oscar, Mary's son, sitting at a table at the back, eating toast. A moment later, Mary's face appeared behind the counter. She was carrying a plate of cupcakes iced in pastel shades, which she handed to a couple of her a couple with a happy gurgling baby. Mary grinned when she saw Tilly and beckoned her over once the family had sat down. What can I help you with? Mary asked. Has Jack been experimenting again? He's trying to make pop cakes like the ones in the Ian of Blyton books, Tilly explained, but he's run out of vanilla and he wondered if you could have if he could have a little bit of yours if you can spare some. Of course, of course, Mary said. Sit down, let me grab some from the kitchen. Do you do you want some lunch while you wait? You look a bit peaky. I'm okay, Tilly said. She looked up at Mary, testing how she felt about sharing the news about the box with her. I just found some of my mum's old stuff. It's put me in a bit of a funny mood, I guess. I don't have much that was hers. Oh, love, I can see why that might have thrown you, Mary said before planting a kiss on the top of her head. Her hand rested on Tilly's shoulder a little longer than it usually did, and then Tilly felt a squeeze as Mary headed off towards the kitchen. Sit down. I'll be right back. Okay, we'll stop there. So we've been introduced to a new character called Mary, who runs another bakery opposite the bookshop. And I think we might have had our first taste of going into a book if she stepped on some marmalade sandwiches. Have you guessed yet what character loves marmalade sandwiches? If you do, you can email me and let me know. All right, speak to you soon. Hope you're keeping safe. Have a lovely weekend. Speak to you soon. Bye.